As a kid, your favorite memories might include a trip to the toy store, picking out the newest release that was all the craze on the playground. But there were more ways to get your hands on the fantastic plastic. Back in the day, they'd throw toys at you any chance they got, if it got you to buy more product, that is. And often these toys you save points for had a special variant color or they were characters you could only get by waiting 8 to 12 weeks as you kept a close eye on the mailman's every turn. In this week's Ed's Retro Geek Out, we're taking a look at another lineup of exquisite mail away toys and what you have to do to get them delivered to your doorstep. So be sure to subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy videos and let's strap in for some toy history. During the 1980s, G.I. Joe had the mail away concept down to a T. Anything from figures to vehicles and other sorts of merchandise you could get thanks to collecting flag points or joining the fan club for even more fun premiums. Collecting points would also mean ruining packaging for future collectors. Let's pop that on the side burner for this episode. In the meanwhile, UK's Palatoy had done a similar thing to their Action Man, scaling them down like the Joes and calling them Action Force. Mid 80s, Hasbro swooped in, taking over Palatoy from General Mills, and started introducing American G.I. Joe releases into the line as well as the fan club, but still under the Action Force banner to soften the transition. What you would get in the mail was the Action Force fan pack, and in there you got a lot of bang for your buck or pounds. It cost around four pounds to get it delivered to your door back in 87. And here's what you got. A greenish wallet within it. You'd find your membership card, special pass, operation shutdown game, which came with a briefing cassette, sample file cards, a code breaker, pens, and a notebook. And for collectors now, it's just a fun addition to your Action Force shelf. But before the Hasbro and actually Milton Bradley takeover, Palatoy had their own version of the mail away exclusive, as you can see on the back of the cards. You could also send in for a mailway called Skeletron. All you needed to do was collect five special medals on the packaging of these action figures and send them in with 35B to cover postage. What you got was a nice looking skeleton soldier, Skeletron. No backstory is known for this figure in the comics or a file card, but the sticker they applied did feature the Red Shadow skull, so it's fair to assume that he was part of Baron Ironblood's team. A pawn in this genius of evil's master plan to destroy all organized government in Europe. With most figures looking like army men, this figure was sort of sci-fi that lent more to the Star Wars license Palatoy also acquired back then. I have to say, the skeleton robot is an absolute banger of a toy that would have you going bonkers when it arrived in the Royal Mail. Just like the candy, bonkers, which always had fun commercials and would take the next step tying into the Madball success with their ugly ball promo. Ugly balls from bonkers. You'll love them. It's got the face only a mother could love. This could surely bounce up the interest in this chewy candy for kids. And they'd need to get at least 10 outside wrappers to send in for this free toy. Sculpt wise, it's up to standard with the mad balls, a gruesome dead like ball with tongue sticking out. The blacked out eyes are extremely creepy, making it a fun mad balls knockoff to keep an eye out for. And some toys were so popular they had the influencer deals down before it was a thing. Influencer Barbie or Kool Aid Barbie or Wacky Warehouse Barbie was an exclusive that stuck around for a couple years of the Sugary Drinks reoccurring promo tour by the Wacky Warehouse name. Even in 1994, when she was also celebrating her 35th birthday, she took time to promote her sponsors, proudly sporting a Kool-Aid beach bag. As part of the free stuff Wacky Warehouse promo, she was available for only 300 points amongst other promos like t-shirts, toys, and even video games. So if you want free stuff, you need to get your Kool-Aid on. Candy and cereal has always been the perfect vehicle to get your target group for toys. Beautiful day for Frank and Betty, the world's super sweet new cereal. But one of the biggest mailways wouldn't be a toy per se. It was actually more of a role-playing toy. Actually, a whole mansion. 
Serial boxes have always been creative with giving their boxes a second purpose, a second life as an arts project. But in 1981, this General Mills box could get you a real four foot tall monster mansion. Just fill out the card in the back and send in $12.99 and two UBCs from the monster serials. Terrific! What you would get is a sturdy cardboard set you could assemble into a bright and colorful playing house with all the mascots that you could attach to the walls. Frank and Barry, Count Chocula, and Boo Berry together with a monster face wheel. And you would also get some Batty Bats, Silly Spiders, Springy Snake, and a monster membership card. This is truly a work of art and after all, monsters are timeless. But what about a free monster toy? Well, a free monster GoBot. With the purchase of any four GoBots, you'd get a free creepy figure of four dollars value. But not the one you could find in stores from the first wave. This would be a special green purple version that's somewhat tied into a cartoon episode where the character got enslaved by the overseers in the story Chains of Doom. Apart from a commercial really running with the exclusivity of the toy, you also have promos in comics where we would also get an insight on the character finally as there were almost none on the back cards. From the depths of the Antari star system on a scorched planet of suit and ash, a modified mutant emerges, creepy. Through a weird intermingling of metallic and living parts, this fearsome creature arises, easily able to change from monster robot to monster vehicle. A welcome recruit to Psykill's band of renegades, Creepy can use his claws to snap GoBots in half or send a lethal poison shooting out from his spider legs. The worst of all monsters to creep into existence. Creepy thrills to the sport of his deadly game. Even renegades must take care that Creepy's power doesn't threaten their existence. Guardians beware. The final conflict may be near. I do really like the repaint on this one, it really does the trick, whilst for companies, it's an easy way to distinguish a toy as the promo without having to dish out the cash for new molds. Also released in the 80s is Kenner's Superpower Series 2, which would not offer a repainted figure but another role playing toy. This time, you could become the superhero that put DC Comics on the map. With three proofs of purchase and $1.50, you could get your hands on a Superman cape. Red vinyl with the Superman logo on it. What more do you really need? They made sure to add child size to the promotional text to not confuse any call L aspiring parents from tying the Superman cape around their neck and becoming the Man of Steel. Ready to hunt down Lex Luthor before he blows Metropolis to nuclear hell. This is clearly a job for a kid in a vinyl cape. Looking back, it might not look like a lot, but if you had the right amount of imagination, this cape would have been the best toy ever during your Superman phase. During the 90s, they brought Clark Kent back to the small screen, both in live action with Lois and Clark and in cartoon form. What the hell are you? Probably a product from the success of Batman the Animated Series. So that meant new toys for this decade, new lines, and in 1997, a new mailway offer in the Total Justice sub Line. This offer would get you exclusive Cyberlink editions of both Superman and Batman. The difference would be in the plastics used as they now had translucent features, best seen by looking at their capes. But also the legs and limbs would have clear see-through parts. With four proofs of purchase, these could be on the way to you. The previous year they had also been grouped together as a two-pack with trading cards or with an exclusive comic book. To be honest, the figures aren't that great, they can barely stand up and they have the same issues the buffed up Star Wars Power of the Force figures are known for. I mean, Kenner was just trying to buff up everything back then. Back to 1989 when the small screen gave birth to The Simpsons, quickly becoming a nationwide and global success. By 1990, Bart Mania was sweeping the nation. Anything with Bart Simpson on it would sell and propel this creation into a real pop culture phenomenon, bringing in billions. Kids already had the controversial t-shirts, so where were the toys? Leave it up to Mattel, who had acquired the license for the action figures and quickly made a first wave of toys. As an extra incentive, they would try to up sales with the promise of a mail-away exclusive. Our favorite underachiever in a different outfit. With the purchase of three Simpson figures, you could get a free special limited edition Bart, but please allow eight to 10 weeks for delivery. Known as Save Blinky Bart, the toy is considered a holy grail amongst Simpsons collectors 
collectors. Your dreams will go unfulfilled. Uh oh. The repaint shows Bart with white shoes, green eat my shorts, and a white t-shirt featuring the now as seen on TV famous three-eyed mutated fish blinky. So next time you visit Comic Book Guy's shop, you might want to keep three eyes out for this one. Wait a minute. One, two. And then we're ziplining back to last week's episode. Kenner Sky Commanders also had a promo on their first waves packages for a Commander Back of Call. Save up and you could get the Battle Track Dispatch with Commander Cliff Baxter when you buy three specially marked Sky Commanders figures. The vehicle would allow you to span the canyons of the high frontier in your room with six feet of Battle Track roadway allowing you to set up battle stations in midair. Sure, it has a gravity hook and cushion pants. But to be honest, there isn't a lot of excitement to this toy. It seems they needed to get rid of the stock, and offers like this could do exactly that. Another short-lived line was Hasbro's 1987's Air Raiders. Two-inch figures and vehicles with air pressure fueled projectiles and even vehicles themselves would get propelled by air pressure. Kind of like Mattel's Hot Wheels Streaks line from 1991. And actually, Mattel made an Air Raiders game for the Atari 2600. But hey, all these names end up getting reused over and over again. Hasbro's Air Raiders tell the tale of Airlandia, where the evil Emperor Aerozar, leader of the Tyrants of Wind, and his sinister cohort Baron Jolt want you to help them command the Tyrant forces and attack the heroic Air Raiders. For six bucks and a dollar fifty for shipping, you would get 24 air-powered missiles that you'd for sure end up losing some during battle or one of Mom's cleanup operations. A flying air launch glider and a full color relief map of Airlandia. The figures for Emperor Aerozar and Baron Chalt would only be available through this offer and couldn't be purchased in any store. Too bad the line only had a comic to give it some win in its sales as the cartoon in the commercial looked really great. It had potential and I would have definitely loved watching it. Even though the figures are small, the sculpting and details on these together with the colors are pretty sweet. So order now and let the battle begin. The power is in the air. From the makers of G.I. Joe, Air Raiders. Back to 1995 when Kenner released toys for the movie Congo. Lost in the deepest reaches of the jungle lies a dark secret. Journey with the heroic Congo explores to the lost city of Zinj with its legendary minds. Incredible bounty. Beware of the ferocious Zinj apes who viciously guard the treasure, destroying all who come near. They're hiding in the jungle, watching and waiting. In the Congo, you are the endangered species. Alongside Taco Bell, PepsiCo, and more companies licensing ventures to promote the movie, the toy department would often be taking care of Kenner for these movie releases. In the Good Guys Explorer department, we get Kenner's usual reused molds, but the apes is where the line really shines, like the Mangler or Blast Face Monkey, but also the deluxe figure called Bone Crusher. The mailway in this case wouldn't be offered on the toy packaging, but through a bigger offering of Congo prices, you'd get the details on select Pepsi and Mountain Dew bottles. The ape called the Zinch Ape that was offered was just a repaint of the Blastface ape. From afar, he looked like Bone Crusher, but the paint apps allowed for more diversity, a broader palette of gray, blue-greenish color, and a red face with the teeth and one eye that glowed in the dark. Very welcome to collectors because an extra ape for this line or to add into your Jurassic Park or Aliens collections as a little Easter egg. As always with mail aways, either everybody had one or no one went through the trouble of getting them. In this case, it's the second option, but a couple years ago, tons of them surfaced on eBay, so a storage unit was probably found where they had been locked up in time, much like the lost city of Zinch in the movie. So you could potentially build an army of Grey Killer. Gorilla. Now, army builders are nothing new, but would they ever offer an army builder as a mail away? In 1982, Star Wars would take it to the next level with the free Build Your Armies promo, in which you got six figures. Sure, these were part of the short lived micro collection, but perfect if you had committed yourself to the line. With only two proofs of purchase, you'd receive six unique die cast figures, including three Imperial Stormtroopers and three Rebel Soldiers, all in hot gear. 
Karen's micro collection was a great idea, but it didn't get the desired response at retail, resulting in it being cancelled after only one year. And this is mainly due to a multitude of then new releases hitting the market for a piece of the action figure pie, with Mattel's Masters of the Universe or Hasbro's G.I. Joe The Real American Hero taking up the competition. Kenner had inspired these companies to create a worthy adversary for their golden goose, but it wouldn't be the last of their amazing run in Star Wars Mail Away history. Do you remember any other Mail Away toys and Please leave them in the comments down below. They might pop up in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy videos. Leave a like, leave a comment, and if you like to do more, you can always check out my Patreon. I really hope to see you on my socials and in the next episode. See you later.